The sermon this week is about enduring, and uh, that's exactly what we're doing in the weather. So it's a perfect illustration. If I start to get choppy, it's just that I'm cold. It's not, it's not the screen, okay? So let's talk about this. Matthew chapter 24, Jesus mentions tough times that are coming. Enduring through tough times. That's what I want to talk to you about today. When I was a student at George Fox in my junior year, I was playing on the basketball team and every year we would run before we got to the practices, we'd try to get in shape and then they'd have us run the mile to see what kind of shape we were in. Well, I was never a trackster and uh, I felt like I could run all day just because I was in pretty good shape. But you know, basketball shape and track shape aren't exactly the same. I figured this out. Because that day I just thought, well, I'm just going to go out and run as hard as I can. I feel good. And the first lap, man, I was just blitzing it. I was in great shape. I felt good. I was probably a quarter lap ahead of everybody on the first lap. Second lap, I'm about a third ahead. But when I got to that, I'm just cruising. And I get just coming around the bend in that last quarter mile. In the second lap, there's four in the mile. And someone put a piano on my back. I didn't see him do it. But you've heard the terminology, the lactic acid kicks in because you're not made to just run, run, run as hard as you can for as long as you can. And I didn't have the endurance to do that. Well, I was, I was at least a quarter lap ahead of everybody. But by the time I got around that fourth lap and I just had to tough it out, I felt like I was going to die. I had gone out too early and three people passed me. But I finished. I think I ran a a 520 or something like that. Could have done better if I had to pace myself. But did you know the Bible refers to our life as a race? Our life in Christ? Hebrews 12, 1 says, And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. Now, I just want you to know, because people don't seem to realize this, that I have hard times too. That my wife has hard times, that our family has hard times. You'll hear one of the tough stories of our life at the end of this sermon. And yet, no matter what comes our way, we have the understanding, you need to have the understanding that when these tough times come, we need to endure. We need to push through. We need to keep going. We need to finish. That Greek word, endure, here's what the definition of it means, to stay under or remain in Christ when the tough time comes. It means to bear up under a trial, to persevere through hard times. Hard times are coming. In Matthew 24, verse three, the disciples are talking to Jesus. This is our text today. As we go through the sermon series, the King Revealed, talking about Jesus Christ in Matthew. The disciples say, hey, tell us, verse three, When these things will be, when will the sign of your coming and the end of the age happen? And Jesus goes on to share with them. I won't read it, but I'll walk through it with you for a moment. He says, the last days will intensify through time. As it draws near, there'll be false prophets. There'll be deceptive religious teachers, even within the church. There'll be armed conflicts. Listen to these things. Natural disasters wars and famine, and then you'll be delivered up to tribulation. I mean, all that's before the great tribulation, which I'll talk about next week, along with the second coming of Jesus Christ. But tribulation is coming and you'll be hated by all nations for my namesake. Now, at some level, he's talking about the Jewish people here as he talks to the disciples. They're Israelites. They're Jewish. And in AD 70, there was uh, a great tribulation of some sort for those people. The the temple was demolished. Thousands of Christians were enslaved. And, and And then hundreds of Christians were martyred and crucified on a cross. And so these guys, these guys, some of them got to see that some tribulation along the way, but it was for them at some level, but it's for us today as well. 
the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us that hard times are coming. The Bible tells us that we will be persecuted as Christians. That's you and that's me. 2 Timothy 3.12 says it. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. If you're living a godly life in Christ Jesus, if you're out there with your faith at some level, you will be persecuted, not just in the previous generations, but in our generation. I think I saw this last week. You've heard of the actor Chris Pratt, who's known for his roles on Guardians of the Galaxy and Parks and Rec. Well, he was blasted on social media last week because of his conspicuous absence at a Joe Biden fundraiser. People thought it was evidence that he had secret support of Donald Trump. And from their conversation, it eventually devolved into criticism of Chris Pratt's Christian faith. He attends Zoe Church in Los Angeles, and that's a solid church. And that was a source of controversy last year because of their belief in morality. And Twitter users began to assail him because he didn't show up for this Biden fundraiser like many of the Avengers cast did. They began to mention his absence as proof that he was for Trump. Now, mind you that unlike some of his fellow Avengers, Pratt has never spoken publicly about who he supports. Uh, it's, he actually, in 2012, he gave a donation to Barack Obama and his wife has said recently that she's voting for Biden. And yet, they assail him. Why? I don't think it really has to do with the Trump thing because he hasn't even said. I think it has to do with his faith. You see, unlike uh, many, he's willing to get out there a little bit about his faith. And he is said on Instagram, if you, if you look at his bio on Instagram, it says Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And then you can see on Twitter that Chris Pratt has said, I love my family. I love friends, jokes. I love Jesus, movies, stories, outdoors, and golf. I believe that's why he's being persecuted, because of his faith. And we're in an environment where if you're out there for Jesus, you will be persecuted too. If you stand for the truth of the word of God, I'm not talking about me being mean-spirited. I'm not talking about even being political. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about God's love. I'm talking about the truth of God's word. If you stand for it, you will be persecuted even in this generation. And I believe you need to stand for him. Matthew 5, 10 says this, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now here it is, plain as day, Maybe it doesn't sound encouraging, but remember what the word encouraging means, to put courage into. That's what encouraging means. And I wanna put some courage into you today. I wanna get you ready for the battle. All followers of Jesus should expect trouble. It's right here in the Bible. We should expect opposition during our time on the earth. We should expect that we will suffer because of our loyalty to Christ, because of our loyalty to his word. It is a natural part of the Christian faith that every generation before us had to endure as well. And we're not gonna get to escape that. But here's the deal. Why would God let this happen? Because it makes us stronger. When the church is persecuted, it actually makes the church stronger. Now I wanna zero in on a couple of scriptures in this passage right now. Matthew 24, 12 and 13. If you have a touch device or a Bible, turn to that. <clears throat> and let's take a look at those too. He's talking about end times, and then Jesus says this, and because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. That's pretty serious business. The one who endures to the end will be saved. Now, we're seeing lawlessness increase in our day, aren't we? We're seeing buildings being burned down. We're seeing violence. We're seeing crime at levels that we haven't seen in my lifetime. And we're seeing love grow cold. I want to talk about that for a minute. Love grow cold. That's not only love for God because this talks about Christians turning away when the pressure comes. This passage does. It's not just talking about love for God, but I want us to be careful because it's talking about love for others. And in this environment, I've never seen so much harshness and anger in my whole life with what's happening political, politically. 
And I want Christians to be careful not to let your love for others grow cold. We are called to love God and we are called to love others. And yet I find some people getting into this battle and going politically in such a sense that they're, they're getting so angry towards another side, whatever side it may be, that I can't see the love of God in them anymore. I can't see their love for others coming out. But we're to endure hardship. We're to love people even when they don't love us. As a matter of fact, that's how they're gonna see Jesus Christ. We stand for truth. We stand for the love of God. We stand for the word of God. But the word of God tells us this, God is love. The word of God tells us this, love will never fail. Do not lose your heart to love others in this season. Be caring, be loving, no matter how they are towards you. All these things, love growing cold, These signs that I talked about are signs of the day of the Lord's return drawing near. We don't talk about that much, but Jesus is coming back. They'll say that space aliens snatched people away, millions from the earth. That's what'll happen when the rapture takes place. And again, I'll talk about that in the coming weeks. But but, but the Lord is coming soon. And God is telling us all of this to get us ready. We'll face persecution now. We may face intense persecution going forward. But it's to get us ready and to strengthen us. Have you ever heard about the baby giraffe and how it's born? It's an interesting process. The baby giraffe is born from a mama giraffe who stands while she gives birth. That seems fine until you realize that the baby's going to drop 10 feet to hit the ground. Often on their head. That's a pretty rough beginning. And then mama will go up and kick the baby, the baby giraffe, till it gets up. Josh was talking about we never do this to our kids, but mama giraffes do it to their babies. Get up. Giraffe gets up wobbles, falls down, mama kicks it again till it gets up two or three times. And then when it gets up, honest to goodness truth, mom will swipe under its legs and knock it down and then make it get up again. And then when it gets up two or three times, cut its legs out from under it till that baby giraffe gets up. Why is mama so tough on that baby? Because they have Uh, lions and hyenas that are watching on the outside usually. They surround. And giraffes stay in a herd and it's the way that they make it through. And if that baby giraffe can't learn quickly to stay with the herd, it will get killed by the prowlers. It will get killed by the predators. So mama is doing the hard thing to get the baby ready to move with the herd at some level as quickly as it can so it stays alive and she's actually helping, not hurting. Did you know God helps us build muscle sometimes? Did you know he allows hard times for for spiritual muscle that could come our way and for witness that would come to others? It gives us courage to fight, courage to have faith in this world. Write this one down. This, This is the line of the day right here. Jesus doesn't promise to keep us from problems, but to be with us in them. One of the things that the enemy likes to do to knock people's faith out from under them where they never have faith going forward is to make them feel that they have problems because God doesn't like them or God doesn't love them or God's not for them. God never promised to keep us from problems, but he promised to be with us in problems. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, in this world, you will have trouble. The Bible says that there's hardship that we'll have to face in this world. I want to tell you about a hard time that my family went through, namely my parents. It's an interesting week for us last week as we traveled to Healdsburg, California, about 70 miles out of San Francisco into a little city where my brother died at 22 months old in a house fire. It's 62 years later. I never met him. He was born before me. My parents first born at a babysitter's house 
the roof collapsed on a room and he and his little cousin at 19 months old were killed and another cousin of mine and my brother were pulled from the fire. Four little kids there, two were saved, two were lost. That's a pretty tough thing to endure right there. How do you overcome that? My parents were people of faith, volunteering at church. They loved God. And all of a sudden, they had lost their baby in a fire. And I don't know about you, but I'd have a lot of questions of God on that one. It was good for me to travel with my parents to see the graveside. And here's why we went 62 years later. My parents, you know, when you're in the ministry, you don't get rich. They never had the money to put a gravestone, a grave marker on that grave until recently. And they scraped up the $900 and sent it ahead and had a stone, a marker placed on Eric Ray's grave. My dad at 91 years old said, I have to do this. I have a burden. I have to finish this. He had never been able to place that stone. So they put it there and we flew there. Even at 91, they were willing to take today's risks. My parents were to get there and take a look. We rounded the corner to that cemetery and we walked up to the gravestone and I'll just be honest with you. For my parents, in that moment, it was like yesterday. For my mom, she went back to the day she had stood there once before. I said a few words about the hope of heaven and we can't bring him back, but we can go see him. My dad spoke to Eric Ray. It was interesting. I've never heard him do that before. I don't know where he is theologically, but that day he was talking to Eric. And he said, you were such a pleasant boy. And it was beautiful, but it was hard. And he said, I'm looking forward to see you. And my mom said, I love you. And then we prayed. I think it was good for me to be there because I got to see that my parents endured one of the hardest things that a parent could ever endure and they stayed in there with God. Now, maybe I haven't been through things as hard as you have, but my parents have. Our family has. But let me tell you the beauty of hanging in, the beauty of enduring. My parents pulled through and had four more kids. I was the fourth of five, one that died. Can I just tell you, we felt loved all of our lives. Can I let you know I had a blast with my dad and a, and a blast with my mom? Can I tell you that they never made me feel like Eric Ray was more special than me or like his loss somehow would keep them from loving me totally because of how bad the pain was. Somehow they were able to hang in. It wasn't, I'm just gonna, I'm just being truthful today. I'm telling this story, coming raw from my heart. Dad had had a little run-in with one of the preachers in that area and that man and his wife came over immediately after the baby died and his wife told my mom that Eric Ray had died because they had backslidden and that God had taken him as a result. How do you overcome that? The Bible talks about even religious leaders doing stupid things in the last days. I, I, hey, I'm a religious leader. Or, you know, I don't like to say the word religious, but I'm a Christian leader, but I'm, I'm human. We're all human. And we can do dumb things. And if some preacher's done a dumb thing to you, let me just stand as a preacher and say, would you please forgive us? God loves you. But my parents, somehow, they, honestly, they struggled for 10 years. But somehow they pulled through. Somehow they loved us. Somehow we had good family times. They put Jesus in our hearts and lives. They made us feel loved, and we loved them greatly. And I think they would tell you today that they've had a good life. That was the hardest thing they've ever been through but on the other side of it, God bless them. And then the hope of heaven. They're gonna see Eric Ray someday. I look forward to meeting him someday in heaven. We have to endure 
hardships in this life and hang on to our faith in Jesus. Listen to me now. The best thing you could ever do is not give up. Stay with Jesus. Endure. Stay with his word. Trust God. Trust him through the hard times. Decide now that no matter what comes your way, you will cling to Jesus and you are not letting go of him. Stay with Jesus. Love him with all your being. Trust him when you can't understand. And you will see beauty on the other side in this life, just like my parents did. They've seen beauty. Part of the beauty was me. I'm just saying. (laughs) But it was my other siblings too. And they have the hope of heaven. A place where there's no more crying, no more pain, no more tears. As you remain faithful, you can be assured of this. Matthew 24, 13, I wanted to read it again. The one who endures to the end will be saved. God does love you. In this life, you will have trouble, but you'll have blessing too. Hang on to him. You'll have heaven as your hope as well. If you're here, I want you to bow your heads and pray. If you're watching online, I just want to ask everybody this question. Watching inside, do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? I know we're talking about persecution and we're talking about enduring, but somehow even in a message like this, the love of God comes through. The hope of heaven comes through. There's only one way to heaven, the Bible tells us in Acts 4.12. Only one name whereby we can be saved and it's the name of Jesus Christ because he's the only begotten son of God who gave his life on a cross to die for my sins, for your sins. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Started with Adam and Eve. They'd sinned and they turned away from him. And now all humankind, you included, me included, we did that too. But God says, even though you've been separated by sin, even though I can't cohabitate with sin, I'm gonna make a way where you can be forgiven. And you know what he did? He sent his only begotten son and let the wrath of sin fall on Jesus Christ, his son, so it wouldn't fall on you. You say wrath against sin, that's right. God can't cohabitate with sin. He's altogether holy but he's altogether loving, so he makes a way. And he gave his son Jesus, but he knew he would raise him up again. We'll talk about that next week. Jesus sits at the right hand now saying to the father, father, you can let them in, insert your name. Even though they've made a lot of mistakes, even though they sinned, you can let them in because I died on a cross that they may be forgiven. Their punishment, I paid the ransom for it. Jesus pleads with the father and the father says, Come on in. My son has paid the price. If you want Jesus Christ, I just want you to pray this prayer with me. Just say it out loud wherever you are. Say, Father God, please forgive me. I've sinned and I've made a lot of mistakes, but I believe that you love me. I believe that you gave your son Jesus Christ to die for my sins. Jesus, come into my heart and make me brand new. I'm gonna follow you with my life Thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving your life on a cross for me. Father God, thank you that you raised Jesus from the dead and he's the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, I give you the steering wheel of my life. In your holy name I pray, amen. If you said that prayer online, there's a link that you can click in the chats there, a button that says, I gave my life to Christ. That'd be great if you'd do that. We could know, it would encourage us. And if you want some help to start your new life in Christ, just click on that link and we have some resources for you, some people that we can connect you with to start your new life. Listen, for the drug addicted person, you're not the first that Jesus has forgiven and you won't be the last. He loves you so much. He'll help you overcome. He'll help you through. He doesn't throw people away. He loves you. So get up. Walk towards him, take his hand. He'll help you and we'll walk with you till you're delivered. God loves you and so do we. Now for others today, I wanna say this. Do you need strength to endure? Are you in the midst of a trial? Let's just bow our heads for those that are in the cars here and inside, here outside. Just bow our heads for a moment. And, And I want you to just lift your hand. You can just lift it outside the window of your car if you're here today. Lift it if you're sitting here today in in the room and and maybe even online if it makes you feel good about responding. Just lift your hand if you say, man, I'm going through a trial. Count me in and I I need God's help right now. 
Okay, I see hands. I see hands that are going up, hands in the cars, hands live here. I'm sure there are hands inside. I'm sure you're feeling it at home. I'm going to pray for you right now, and I want you to pray and ask God to help you in your trial. Lord, you told us in this life that there would be hardship. You never promised us that we wouldn't have struggles, but you did promise us that you would help us, that you would walk with us, that you would take our hand, that you would lead us through, that there would be blessing on the other side of the trial and the pain. There were winds and there were waves on the Sea of Galilee and there was fear that all would be lost. But eventually, with Jesus in the boat, they got to the other side. Jesus, I pray that my brothers and sisters will know that as they keep their hand in yours, that as they stay in the boat with you, that as they endure, they will get to the other side with you. This pain will not last forever. Here, there, in the air, Lord, you're going to bless us. You're going to help us through. And God, give us strength that we might bless those that are around us. Just like my parents did in the midst of their pain. They still learned how to follow you. They still were a blessing to me and to all around them. Thank you for them, Lord. Let people know going through a trial that you'll pull them through, that you'll use their story, that you'll bless others, and that they have the hope of heaven no matter how great their loss. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your greatness in Jesus' name. Let's all give Jesus a hand. Honk those horns. All right, for Jesus, hallelujah.